Hello there, it's Simone. I recently received some happy mail from Mari at Doodles da Mari and I wanted to swatch these inks that she sent along uh, with you today on camera. Uh, she also sent along some other things that I have safely stored away and I actually don't really know where exactly I put them so I I'm not able to share them with you, but it was a super nice, amazingly well curated package. Um, and what I, I don't know if you saw her videos before, but she shared a video recently where she packaged, packed some happy mail for a different friend and she um, hand drew stickers and then fussy cut them with her hand. And I think I haven't like, you know, taken them apart or anything but I think she did this the same thing for me and I I'm like blown away that's so amazing so she sent four eight ten ink samples it's like okay when am I ever going to use those um and I'm going to swatch them except for one because I think I already swatched that one or I, I did I give it I might have given that to a friend of mine already that I know. She sent, okay, so then she didn't send 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. So she sent 11 samples. Oh, and she also, let me check if I can find it. She also, and I'm going to read that when I'm doing the uh, voiceover. She also sent uh, what inks she sent and why she likes them, which I really like. I think I have to do that more. Um, so she wrapped each of those vials with this tape kind of stuff. Um, and I'm going to do that off camera, but I just wanted to show you, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that is something that you can get at uh, a uh, hardware store with at the plumbing section, if I'm not mistaken, I so that your um, what are the things that water flows through? Those uh, do not drip and are tightly sealed. So she sent ten of those, eleven in in fact. I gave along, I passed along one because it is a an ink and color that I don't necessarily care for. Um, and so because she doesn't know it's totally okay and I know that some of my friends like those so I just uh, grabbed it out of the box and passed it along but then let's meet in the voiceover all right so um that was a lot of inks that I swatched the first one is here this uh, Ferris wheel press. So many of the inks that she sent me were Ferris wheel press, as I mentioned before. This one is called Cherry Blossom, and she actually sent, um, I think I also mentioned that in the beginning, over a whole sheet of paper where she listed all the inks that she sent and also what it is supposed to be. So she writes, light pink with rose gold shimmer. It's beautiful, but very light light i liked using it on a broad nib most fountain ferris wheel press shimmers are very subtle but you can clearly see them with a flashlight and i really liked that she accompanied these inks with some sort of writing so that i can understand why she likes this ink i'm not really sure that i would be the person to be able to use this if you've been watching my videos um you know how I'm ranting about these unreadable colors. I often journal in not so perfect lighting situations on the couch when my family is watching some sort of stuff on TV. There's not a lot of uh, direct light. There's lots of backlighting. And this color is probably not really readable. I have sometimes some of the inks that I have in, in my pens because I you know, I'm not, not inking them, um, then I can't even see where I wrote and it's really hard. So that is probably one of those. And I'm hesitant to put this in an ink. And I'm also, if you watched my last currently inked video, you saw how 
weird I shimmer inks uh, perform with my fountain pens. I have gotten some really helpful tips on that video for sure and I'm definitely going to try but I know that some of my friends don't use special pens with their shimmer inks and they are successful. It's just always me. Maybe shimmer ink doesn't like me. Um, and then I swatched Ferris Wheel Press Glimmering Grayish and that color really that I really liked. It's it's a very, very light gray when you do not put a lot of ink onto the paper, as I did here with the swatch. Um, but it has some gold shimmer. Let me let me check what, what she wrote. Uh, warm gray, gold shimmer. I really like this one, but gray is one of my favorite colors. Yeah, uh, gray is I have a love-hate relationship with gray because some of them and I don't really know if it's I like cool grays or I like warm grays but some grays just don't look the way I want them to look but this one this one I would really love to see how it performs in a fountain pen and then Ferris will press land of Shangri-La um, let's see what she writes about that um, Ashy brown champagne shimmer. I also haven't used this one yet. Oh, that's the same. She also didn't use the Velvet Ballet. I haven't used that one either. I, I as I said, I gifted my samples uh, to friends. Um, this color is interesting. It's not speaking to me much. I think it's very similar or the one that it reminded me of the moment I saw it when I swatched it is the Diamine Inkvent 2021 Winter Spice. I think that one is has a sheen that this one doesn't have, but it's very, very similar. And I'm probably not going to ink this in a pen. Is it ink? Is it pen? Does it have pen potential? Uh, then the next one is Ferris Wheel Press Twinkling Tea Party. And this one has, what does that one have? Forest green with rose gold shimmer. This is a great one for this time of the year, in my opinion. Okay, so she sent this to me in December. Because, you know, you know, I'm just now getting to actually um, swatching all of the things that I have received from friends over the past uh, six, four to six months. Which is, if I think about that, I feel so bad. <laughs> Uh, it reminds me of Spruce County Post that we received in Ink Flight. I think it's a little bit cooler, um, not not in, not as much blue in there, um, and of course it has some shimmer. Then the next one, oh my gosh, this is another one of those colors where I probably like it, and then I put it in a pen and I can't even read it. But this one is so pretty. It's Ferris Wheel Press Blue. Barrel Tonic. It's a periwinkle blue, purple duo shade, rose gold shimmer. Similar to the first one, which was the Ferris Wheel Press Chidori Cherry Pl Blossom. Oh, I actually forgot one of the names of that uh, on my swatches. Similar to the first one, this one is also very light, but I do like it. All these font Ferris Wheel Press inks were sent to me through their Jubilee program, for your information, which I have... I don't know. I talked about that in my ink flight video when I sh swatched the Ferris Wheel Press inks. Like, have you... Every time Ferris Wheel Press comes out with a new ink, it's like my feed is bombarded with Ferris Wheel Press posts, which often makes me not want to purchase an ink. And I actually haven't purchased any Ferris Wheel Press inks. Uh, not because I don't want to, just because there's so many other inks that I want to try that I just haven't gotten to it yet. Then she sent over some other inks, not just Ferris Wheel Press. She sent Wearing Ghoul Infinite, Infinite Cube. This one is, she says, I think you mentioned in one of your videos you were looking for a brown ink. This is my most recent purchase. I haven't tried it yet, but it should have some gold greenish sheen. It does. And it's really, I really like it. Uh, I actually received a sample from a different friend as well, which then in that video I won't watch. But um, it's a red, 
leaning brown and I think those browns are very much the ones that I prefer to other browns. And then the next one is Colorverse Brunch Date and she writes, <laughs> a lot of people love this one. I bought a bottle, but it is not for me. It is a little bit light and the color is just not super interesting to me. Um, I can see where she's coming from. I, f I actually liked it more, even though she... Like you know when you when you hear someone say, "Oh, I don't like this," then your your expectation is very low. Sometimes that's better for me because then something surprises me. I don't really know what I would compare this to. Uh rust color maybe. It's interesting. That's for sure, and I'm curious to see if it's that light in a pen or if what pen I would have to use to make it legible uh, but it's it's definitely not an ink that I'm completely not liking if that makes sense I, I really it's it's so interesting to me that I would love to see how it performs in a pen and I I haven't decided yet if I like the color or not then she sent Lamy Azurite this is intense <laughs> and she writes about this one I had an interesting it has an interesting green sheen. This is a sample that I bought recently and wanted to share. The sheen shows up in swatches, but not sure how it will show in a pen. Um, I, I find this to be a boring sample, actually. I, it's, it seems very thick. Um, it, it's stuck to the edges of the, of the pen that often suggests that it's drier and um, it's I feel like it can't really decide if it's a, a very if it's blue like very very bright blue or if it's a purple and yeah and then the last two inks that she sent which I'm very super excited about this one exact especially she writes uh, Robert Oster, Fire and Ice. Got a bottle at the Pelican Hub from the D-Stash table. Haven't tested yet. This is an ink that I remember, especially um, the Goulet Pencast people. Brian and uh, Drew talk about a lot. It's one of their customer favorites. And I can see why it's, I think it's the perfect teal, turquoise. Leanne, if you're watching, <laughs> is it a teal? I think it has the perfect balance between blue and green and especially in the writing, not so much the sample. And it has a red sheen halo-ish thing going on. And yeah, I had one this ink as a sample um, in the very first ink that I purchased from Goulet pens. Not inks, like I, I pur purchased a pack of ink samples from them. I think it was called Customer Favorites. And that was back in 2017 and I used that ink and I really liked it. That is definitely true. And then the last one she sent, let me read what she wrote. Um, it was also a distrash from the hub that I haven't tested yet, but accidentally grabbed two samples. And I think they were labeled not correctly because I then researched because it was really weird that it would be called that uh, when it's clearly is a turquoise ink and it's it's the label said de atramentis copper pearlescent so i would have probably like maybe have an ink that looked more like the colorverse brunch date um but then i googled and i found um something about that ink and it is called act it's actually called pearlescent cyan blue copper and what that means if i understood that correctly is that the color is cyan blue and the shimmer or sheen that you have is a pearlescent copper on top of that ink i'm not sure that i that my sample contained any of the particles i, I put them up and down and um 
there was something in there, but maybe they're super tiny that you can't really see them when you swatch it. I'm not sure. Uh, the color reminds me of lots of the regular cyan blue colors. And here is where I find that out. I, I compared the, um, as I said before, the um, Shangri-La to the Winter Spice. And then here I'm, I'm figuring out what this is actually called. Um, but I was so surprised. <laughs> I, I don't know. So what I'm trying to say or where I'm, where I'm going here is she sent over 8, 10, 11 samples and that's so much. And it makes sense because when you're shipping a sample, then why not put in 10 or even more? But I'm like, I feel super overwhelmed with all of those samples and it, I usually ink up maybe nine pens. So what am I going to do with them now? I, that's a weird problem to have. I understand completely. Um, I'm, I need to make sure with all the samples that I have and all the things that I'm still going to swatch. I did receive some more still. Um, what I am expecting myself to do with them. Is it okay if I swatch them and that's appreciation enough? Or is do I have to use them in a fountain pen? What What is the thing that I um, want to get out of those samples? I really have a lot at the moment and I need to uh, rethink my approach. If I, if that makes sense, or my approach is just having them swatched and then comparing them and that's enough, then, then, you know, send more. That's also totally fine. What do you do with your samples when you receive them? Do you swatch them? Is that all you do with them? Do you have to have them in a fountain pen to make them worth your while? Let me know in the comments below. I'd really love to know because that's something that I'm still struggling with. And I think that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. My child is <laughs> waiting in the background patiently or not so patiently to be able to start making themselves some food. Um, I will see you soon. Until then, bye.